Hello students, in continuation of general characters, cell structure, pigments, reserve food material and other general topics, today we are going to study range of thallus in rhodophyta. What is it range? Range means from a smaller size to a bigger size. There is a range of thallus. The thallus varies from smaller size to a bigger size. Let us see. Structure of thallus ranges from unicellular coccoid forms to filamentous branch filaments to parent gametous forms. The coccoid from unicellular, some few of them are unicellular. So they are coccoid form. You have studied coccoid form when you did the staining of bacteria in your FIBSC. That time you did staining and you could see that we had cocci and bacilli. The cocci, that means round round structure. So they are rounded in structure. They are unicellular, cocoid forms, filamentous, branched filaments and then to parent diameter. So these are the various ranges of thallus which you can encounter in rhodophyta. Now we move to the first type that is unicellular cocoid forms. In rhodophyta, this habit is rare and limited. Porphyridium genus is characteristic in having acetylate plastic. You can see here, how does it look like? These are the cocoid forms. This is porphyridium. Now we move to the other types, filamentous and branched filaments. These simple heterotrichous forms are represented by Ordoniella. Basal attachment ranges from a sing single whole fast cell to a creeping or coalesced prostrate system. Example is Ordoniella. You can see here Ordoniella. Still continuing with the range of thallus. Now we have the freshwater form, the Batrachosperma. You can see here the thallus all together different. The thalli of Batrachosperma consists of uniaxially constructed thallus. You can see here in the diagram. Can you see here in the picture? It is a uniaxially uh, uniaxial, uh, you can say the mother axis or the main axis and the axial cells produce determinate branches in whorls. You can see here these whorls which we call glomerule actually. These are the laterals. So you have two types of laterals. Lateral of unlimited growth and lateral of limited growth. So these are of determinate size. These ones. Children, I think you can now visualize or realize that just from simple cocoid forms, the thalli got slightly changed to filamentous and then to the branch, branched filaments and now then uniaxially constructed thalli as you see in case of Batrachospermum. Now we have uniaxially, the next will be uniaxially constructed folios thalli which are found in platysiphonia and nitrophyllum. Sorry, I could not get the picture of platysiphonia. I could only procure the picture of nitrophyllum. You can see here nitrophyllum. How does it look like? Just you can see that it is just foliaceous in nature, just like leaf-like structures. They are not leaves, they are leaf-like structures. In continuation of range of thallus, uncorticated thallus can be seen in antithamnion. You can see here there is no cortication of the thallus. So the branches axis is one only, it is not covered by any cortex. Actual filaments that are partially or completely invested with bands to determinate corticating filaments as in ceramium and centrosiros. You can see here ceramium, you can see here centrosiros. Besides this, heavily corticated throughout as in tylota. So what did you see? You saw uncorticated as in an, uh, antithamnion, you saw uh, actual filament covered by cort the corticating filaments as in ceramium and in centrosiros. Heavily corticated, you will find in thylota. Still continuing with the range of thallus, the simple multiaxial construction is exhibited by ligora. You can see here how ligora looks like. See the simple multiaxial. There are many axes, and it has soft dichotomously branching calcified gelatinous thalli. I told you these are growing attached to the substratum on the bottom of the uh, this thing or in the littoral region you can say 
and they are calcified because they excrete calcium carbonate and their thalli are gelatinous. Still continuing with the range of thallus. Highly complex multi axial forms include species of Gracilaria, where thallus is further specialized with cortex and medulla, and agardiella. You can see here Gracilaria, agardiella, and large folios forms include Gigartina, Gigartinaceae, and which may reach up to one meter in length. You can see here how do they look like? It's crisp. Can you see? Yes. Now in range of thallus you saw that from cocoid forms to filamentous to branch to dicosmously branching to multi axial to corticated species you found a lot of range in the thallus. Now what is happening to the thallus? You will find parenchymatous thallus. It is seen in porphyra and semithora. See how does porphyra look like, just like a paper. And see how does methora looks like? It looks like an angiospermic plant, but it's not. So this is the highest range of thallus, which you can encounter in red. These are few references which I have used for this particular topic. And I stop here with a thank you. Thank you to all of you. If you liked it, please like it, share it and subscribe it. Thank you.